Hello Moss 141, it's Professor Luna and this week we're talking about the Spanish arriving in the Americas, the encounter that takes place. So I want to start off with this short mini lecture similar to what we did in the meeting that we had last week. I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'll share with the class. There's a number of different slides and I won't cover every single slide, but I just want to talk about some of the larger themes that are discussed in the reading and in this week's content and uh, ask you a couple of questions about that content as well. Let's go ahead and get started. So I called this colonizers and the colonized. Mexico and the early, early Spanish Empire. Some would say conquerors and victims. But ultimately, what we want to keep in mind is that the people of the Americas who were um, forced to convert to Christianity uh, were forced to follow Spanish legal and political doctrines and to you know, adapt to the Spanish uh, power systems that were in play. They did, at the same time, influence these systems influenced the rest of the world and in many cases maintained and flourished in certain areas especially those where the Spanish never really made inroads into and so we're gonna see how each each group um, influences one another I almost said complements one another but that wouldn't be the correct terminology so let's let's take a look at some of the themes that are discussed in the week three readings and content from our class. The first is exploration. And with the growth of um, navigation across the oceans, seafaring, uh, groups like the Portuguese, the Italians, and other uh, maritime countries, countries that have you know, large bodies of water near, whether that's the Mediterranean, or the Atlantic Ocean um, had the ability now to travel farther and as you know one of the goals was to find a quicker route to uh, the Indies or to Asia in order to um, promote trade and, and make things faster. Another theme is conquest not only with the arrival of the Spanish but consider powerful groups like the Aztec or the Mexica who had conquered other groups and essentially had a large empire in which they had a number of peoples living in that empire who didn't necessarily uh, like them too much and the Spanish are able to really use that to their advantage. I think that's one of the things that is really not discussed enough in our general conversations about the um, fall of Tenochtitlan and the, the Spanish quote-unquote conquest is the use of allies and alliances that are established, right? Religion is a huge component of Mesoamerican life and then by extension when we take a look at the European powers and their religious goals here in the Americas, their, their goals and their views and the way in which government and religion were highly intertwined. Colonialism. The Spanish had some experience in the places like the Canary Islands, which are, um, you know, islands off of the Iberian Peninsula, that they were able to implement these colonial systems. That's like kind of like a test run, so to speak. So after that, they, you know, utilize some of those same methods to impose a colonial structure that allowed them to be at the top and to allow persons of mixed ancestry, indigenous ancestry, African ancestry uh, to be at the bottom of that colonial order. And that leads us into the next theme of race and ethnicity. You may have heard of the Casta paintings. That's really a symbolic image or imagery that emerges from the Spanish colonial um, system or days, I should say, New Spain. Um, if we, you know, go back a little bit in Spanish history, 
there is, and this, this also intersects with the religion is the presence of, um, the Moors from Northern Africa who had established Al Andalus, which is, you know, where they're, they're essentially ruling the Iberian Peninsula, uh, which is Spain and Portugal. So if you're not familiar with the history of Spain, there's a large, um, Muslim presence there, a, a history of over 700 years in which, um, Christians and Muslims had to coexist, coincide, and um, eventually the Catholic kingdoms of Spain became unified and were able to expel the Moors from Spain. So, um, you know, after that kind of confidence booster, there's a big push. You know, if we come to the Americas, now we have this huge territory of potential new subjects that we can convert to Christianity and expand the, the religion of Catholicism, um, you know, from one continent to the next. And the last common theme for this week is social order. How would society be organized? You know, what were, what were the ways in which the Spanish would implement uh, social order? And initially with, with the arrival of Hernán Cortés and the fall of Moctezuma and Tenochtitlán, um, there's a, a tendency to rule through the rulers. The Spanish are able to use the Aztec leaders to, uh, implement their, their changes. And, uh, little by little, as that transition takes place, of course, the Spanish would, you know, knock down the religious temples of the Mexica and build huge cathedrals. Um, you know, we see that. In evidence in, in places like Mexico City, or if you ever heard of if you've ever heard of the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that's a prime example of um, putting this huge, hugely important religious uh, temple or religious structure over or you know on the site of pre-existing indigenous religious uh, places of religious importance. And even to the point of which, um, you know, there's stones used from the, the Aztec and I believe other indigenous structures used in the building of Catholic churches in Mexico. So those are some of the things I'd like you to think about when, you know, when we're talking and reading about this week's content. Um, you're going to watch a video by smarthistory.org that's going to really kind of expand on some of the points I made. And we'll, we'll fill in, you know, some of the gaps there. Um, but like I said, also, please take a look at this PowerPoint presentation. I'll post it up for you. Uh, it talks a little bit about, you know, some reasons to colonize, some maps. And then it just goes step by step talking about some of the points that I made uh, right now. So please take a look at it. It has some maps, some great images. I think they'll be helpful just to provide you some additional detail. And uh, if you have any questions, please, please message me and we'll talk. All right. I hope you're having a great start to your week and I will talk to you all soon.